first I want to thank Mark Malone and CBS2 for uh, their displaying that not only the marathon runners, elite runners, but most importantly, showcase in Chicago. Really appreciate that. The over 10,000 volunteers, the communities, the block clubs, the historical buildings, it's really it's a, uh, a display of what a city should be, respecting the past and always looking to the future. Well, I love running because it's like I can, I can focus on a lot of different things. It's my meditation for myself. And I use, it, I use running in for all the things I do. You know, if I'm giving a motivational talk to a sales team, I can do my whole talk through my runs. I, if I'm thinking about family or business or whatever, it's a way of cleansing my body and my mind. You know, so people should really take, take the opportunity to um, explore running. A lot of people say it's really East Africans who are the ones who are dominant in running and of course most uh, African Americans are of West African origin, the people who dominate all the short distance records in the world. Um, I think that nobody sits down and says, hey, we think there's a genetic reason why we shouldn't run and I think nobody's sure of any such thing anyway. And if that were so, why would so many white people run? Because there'd be no point in running. So I think the existing roster of races in each of the major cities in America does a lot to both raise awareness for running and participation in running. But I think at the recreation department level, we've got to create better access to running and track and field programs at the youngest possible ages. All over America, cities are building skate parks uh, and other facilities that don't necessarily encourage aerobic activity. They do encourage activity, which is good, but not necessarily aerobic activity. We need to get our young people moving more and young people you know, of all shapes and sizes. And if there were running programs within recreation departments, I think we could introduce more people to a sport that they could participate in for a lifetime. I think there, there is a good number of uh, African Americans who are involved in running right now. They do run the Chicago Marathon. I've seen quite a lot of them. I'm in the gym at the Y. And I do see, we, we do train. We do train. I, and by the way, <laughs> I am an African American even though I'm from Kenya, because we actually are in the same uh, uh, realm of things. I believe that being in America, I am of African descent, so there's really no disparity that I have to make myself so distinguished just because I'm from Kenya as such. So what needs to be really done is uh, this sport could be incorporated in the cu different curriculums, whether it's uh, Chicago Park Districts or at schools, so that when you're young, you can start training to run long distance. Question is is it, are are some uh, like the East Africans are they genetically superior to to us you know the Kenyans and the Ethiopians the Tanzanians be, because they've been born and bred at altitude and and eat a totally natural diet and they don't have public transportation and cars like we do is there is there a reason you know for thousands of years of that kind of living as opposed to our over culture over industrialized you know there may be some reasons for that but in a, in the United States. Perhaps the reason is that, that traditionally, maybe the blacks in the United States, when they, when they were first slaves, were really mostly captured, kidnapped really, of course kidnapped, from uh, West Africa. And West Africa are, are uh, different culture entirely. They, they are not, they're not the runners um, and the hunters that the East Africans are. So perhaps when they came here, they were, they were captured, they were kidnapped because they, they were big and fast and powerful. And so as we know, the, the black Africans in the United States have excelled on the track. There is nobody better in the sprints in the world than the American sprinters up to um, 400 meters. They're, they're fantastic. And so perhaps that may be the reason. Maybe they think that their sport is the sprints and not the long distance. First of all, I'm going to say that it's very, very hard to sell kids on running because running is hard work. 
kids figure that out right away. They want to play and sing and dance and all that stuff. In the adult community, you've got a much better chance of selling it because adults understand the concept of work for success. And the work that you get from running leads to more success in how you feel, uh, weight control, blood pressure, all of these things that are often particular problems for the African com uh, American community, but nothing is being done because they aren't participating enough at this point. You don't find um, in our community that often that people decide on running a marathon. Uh, a marathon is something that calls for extensive training uh, for one particular race. And, you know, I don't really feel that um, um, it's enough excitement. You know, uh, for black Americans, uh, we like sports that uh, a lot of participants a lot of excitement, um, uh, more than just one day. You know, it's like uh, every week we play a basketball game, uh, maybe two basketball games a week in a, in a tournament or a school. Um, and we have much more crowd interaction as opposed to running. You know, running uh, is really uh, an individual sport, whereas um, uh, the sports that we participate in, that we love to participate in, basically team sports and um, you know I think that's one of the reasons why you just don't find a lot of black Americans in uh, long distance running because it's just not enough excitement for them. Like they gon' be shedding some pounds, man They eyes are on the go They chase it down like a hound, man They listen to my jam Find they late to the sound, man But my heart is strong Well, look, I'm gone They chase me right down, man I ain't gonna need no pills To keep my blood pressure down I'm telling y'all oh,
spent time with the Kenyans at the Grand Wilshire Hotel in downtown Los Angeles. On the night before the marathon, they were making ugali, their staple food. Ugali is a staple starch component of many African meals, especially in the southern and east African regions. The traditional method of eating ugali as a main course, and the most common in the hinterland, is to roll a lump into a ball with the right hand and then dip it into a sauce or stew of vegetables and or meat. Ugali is similar to grits from the southern United States. It is often served as part of traditional African meals. Ugali is inexpensive to make and the flour can last for considerable time in average conditions. Also, the crops that produce the corn flour will grow reliably in poor seasons. For these reasons, ugali is an important part of the diet of millions of Africans. Is there a genetic difference among black Americans and Africans? There seems to be some physiological difference in the body types of the East Coast Africans and West Coast Africans. Simply stated, the East Coast Africans, those from Ethiopia, Somalia, Kenya, Eritrea, Tanzania, versus the West Coast Africans, from Morocco, Cameroon, Nigeria, to some degree, the body types are different, the muscle fibers are different, slow versus fast twitch phenomena, and strength levels are different. Many have some notion of why East Coast Africans are typically long distance runners, and West Coast Africans fare better in the short distances, like sprints. All seem to agree that training is a key ingredient for participation, and not region or national origin. The majority of Americans participate in marathon running for fitness and fun, not to compete as in sport competition or to win prizes. Oh, we, we run everywhere in Kenya. We run. It's it's it's, it's a run. It's, it's a joke that you know we wake up running, we go to sleep running. You know, and the thing is, it's 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 almost it's an assumption that every Kenyan can run. That's not true. You know, not every not every Kenyan can run. But we do have some cultural, uh, I would say, uh, influences, which in, by that I mean you have certain tribes who pre, who are very predominant. In, in the running, and if you go back to Kenya, most of them, it, if you look at where they are from in the country, they come from the highland areas, and not to say that no one from a different tribe can train, and no, I'm not trying to discount that, but for the majority of the runners come predominantly from certain tribes within the country, and if you go back and see where these tribes are from, you'll see how that influences the running. For example, my tribe, I've never seen anyone from my tribe uh, doing the long distance running. Uh, I've, most people from my tribe will do the shorter distance, you know, uh, though we're not good for short, we're not known for a short distance, but most people from the western part of the country where I'm from, we'll normally see them, you know, in soccer, and, uh, playing soccer, and doing the sh maybe the sprints, and people from the other highland areas, the tribes from those areas, they come to that lot, I mean, their the emphasis is more on the running, and also generally, Growing up, we know Kenyans are good. Uh, Kenyans as a country, we know we, that we have a track record out there of being good runners. So we have a lot of interest. So uh, at a very early age, of people who already look forward and start training early, and so it's a combination of factors. But not really a cult. No, I want, there's no cultural expectation. What I'm saying is, you've got you know, the, your cultural background definitely does influence. Because if you come from an, from an area which is known for runners, an area where most people there, from based on their background, where they leave the areas, the surrounding areas they come from, you know, they, I mean, you, you grow up running, and it definitely does help in the future if you think of getting into running. You already, you already have that. Uh, I, 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 I call it the benefit of having the cultural influence within already inherent in your system just based on where you come from because where you come from if you come from a highland areas you're already attuned to a certain level of uh, breathing to a certain level of uh, lifestyle which is different from someone who comes from the coastal area which is the climate is different the altitude is different so your level of activity is definitely also affected by that so that plays a very big uh, part in, 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 in all these runners that you see here you know because if you go through the names I always tell people go through the names of the runners who are here from Kenya and look at the communities that they come from, the tribes that they come from. And it's, you'll all see they all come from, majority of them, they come from maybe three distinct tribes in the country, you know? So, go figure. The top three men up in third place from Kenya.
with a time of 2.07.14. He's been in the top two, top three finishers every time he comes to Chicago. Great, great competitor, Mr. Daniel Jenga. In second place with a time of 2.07.09, also from Kenya. He was a pacer last year. He, stu he stayed for the whole distance this year and finished second with a time of 2.07.09, Benjamin Mayo. And making his debut in Chicago, first times, uh, first time, first time is a charm. Obviously, we were excited to have him here, and he came through in a big way. Our 2005 LaSalle Bank Chicago Marathon champion with a time of 2:07:02 from Kenya, Felix Limo. Felix looks like he could run again, run it again. I'm breaking these things down and, and looking at, at ethnic issues when looking at, at sports. If we'd had this conversation 20 years ago, you know, Kenyans weren't running uh, marathons then. I mean, it was a big deal. You know, they thought people, the Kenyans could run marvelous in the, in the five and 10, the Africans. And, but they couldn't sprint, they could never go that far. No, they were sort of typecast in this middle. Well, obviously very wrong. You know, we have them winning Olympic medals in the sprints, and we have them obviously winning and setting world records at, at, in the marathon. Um, I think in many cases it is a mindset. You know, we got to a point that most white kids don't think that they can win in the sprints, so they try other things. It's not that they can't, they just don't believe. And I think that that's, uh, in, in we, we, we go through cycles. The Finns were the answer to distance running. Then the Japanese were the answer to distance running. Then it was the Kenyans, and now it's the Ethiopians. You know, the Moroccans sl slid in there. Um, but they, they have to believe. They they're their neighbors, you know, they see the people that they're training with or that they know. My gosh, he's doing that? Well, I can do that. I know um, uh, black Americans like to run, and I'm encouraging them to have courage like any other person in the world. And... Uh, Running is a very good um, activity. It gives you a lot of long life. And um, I know you, uh, many people doesn't like to work very hard, but I hope that uh, the black Americans will work hard so that they can achieve what Kenyans are doing. What, they, what, what thing they can do is to train more hard. And uh, maybe they can visit they can visit my country and see how people they learn and also they can uh, go to school to see how the uh, small kid how they learn you know I'd love to see more because they're you know you look at some of the the uh, like the African nations like the Ethiopian people and the and the the Kenyan people my gosh they just dominate you know the the marathon now so I'd like to see more African Americans out there and uh, you know what I don't know what we could do to, to maybe get their participation levels up there, other than perhaps, perhaps go into some of these, like at, at the Chicago Marathon, go into some of these, you know, black African American neighborhoods and talk to the kids, and whether you're black or white, and get them excited about running, because that's the key is getting the young people excited, and then they want to go up and maybe try a marathon or get into running someday. Americans have inherently uh, wonderful bodies and minds to participate in speed sports and and so you see them in the hurdles and you see them in the 100 meters and 200 meters and so the kids uh, the young people are gravitating to those sports which are represented by outstanding uh, afro-american athletes and it's just now uh, starting to show up in the distance running which of course is is brought to us by the kenyans to introduce worldwide but <laughs> Well, uh, I would say that the demographics, um, for some reason, and I can't give you the reason why, but uh, we find a lot of women in their late, late 20s and early 30s that are coming to marathoning. So um, I think that right now it would be that demographic uh, group that, uh, that uh, does um, bring the highest numbers to marathoning. Um, in addition to that, um, you have a lot of... Um, uh, masters runners and masters runners would be anyone over the age of 40 
and uh, even nowadays you see more and more runners participating in them in the uh, seniors division, which would be uh, over 70 years of age. So uh, marathoning is certainly inclusive uh, age-wise. Uh, the other demographics are that it's predominantly a um, uh, whites, uh, white people are the, uh, the predominant uh, participants. Um, we don't uh, see many um, of the United States uh, runners coming from the African-American community. However, um, as you know, the, the, uh, the um, world-class athletes, of course, the East African runners um, have, uh, have dominated the sport for, for many, many years. kids who get into it were like me, they just like the feeling of flowing across the ground. I don't think there's any culture or, or you know, race or creed or color that, that distinguishes that. And so when people say, well, can the African American community be involved in distance running and have more and more kids uh, do it, think about distance running worldwide. The marathon is probably the one event where body type means least. The best marathon runners among the women this right now are not only the Americans like Dina Castor, but Japanese women, uh, Kenyan women, European women. Uh, the world, <laughs> the world record holder, is a, a woman who's probably considered too tall to be a good marathon runner. Uh, she, she's a British woman. And, and, and so, uh, again, I, th I think that's the beauty of the sport, that there's no, there's no sort of prerequisite other than the love of the movement. I'm hoping to see a lot more participation ac across the board. Uh, we've had some fantastic winners at Boston lately. We, we got great runners here on Monday this year. We're hoping that as winners win these races and then what we're talking about here with the world marathon majors for example is nurturing those athletes that win showcasing those athletes around the world showcasing them to our communities bringing them as we do now to we have a, a 21 year relationship with some schools in hockington it's called kenya day and we, we bring the athletes out there to, to explain to them how important fitness is how important running is and how great a sport it is, or how great a recreational sport it is. So we're, the races need to do more to bring the athletes into the communities to help motivate kids to be more fit and to take up running. Heart disease and stroke are the number one and number three killers of African Americans, claiming the lives of more than 100,000 annually. Stroke was 2.4 times more likely to occur in African Americans compared to whites. The prevalence of high blood pressure in African Americans in the U.S. is among the highest in the world. Uncontrolled high blood pressure can lead to stroke, heart attack, heart failure, or kidney failure. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention of the National Center for Health, approximately 40% of black women and 41% of black men have cardiovascular disease have more minorities p participating in marathons back in the 50s. It was really almost a, a blue-collar sport, an egalitarian uh, sport. To a certain extent, it's a, uh, an upper-middle-class uh, participant sport. I would really like to see uh, more minorities involved in the, the marathon. Uh, lots of time they're scrambling just to keep them li their own lives together. Uh, but uh, yeah, the sport is open for anybody. Anybody can go out and run it, and it's a relatively inexpensive sport too. Uh, you don't have to pay $500 to play 18 holes on a golf course. A uh, cheap pair of sneakers will get you onto the field. The, the black community uh, has not focused to the same extent on participatory sports as adults uh, as other segments of American society. And the running movement is intrinsically uh, a participatory movement at its base and has up to this point been primarily centered around white Americans taking part in long distance running. I think over time uh, that will and can change 
uh, as people realize the health, healthy benefits of participating in long distance running and marathoning uh, as a goal to set and achieve. Ethiopians and Kenyan runners are dominating the sport at the moment. So you would think that there may be more of an African American uh, community wanting to come out and compete in this type of event. However, you don't. You see most participating in shorter distances, even 5Ks or sprint events. I think the issue is that it's been marketed more towards um, in high school, cross country uh, for more Caucasian kids, uh, where basketball and football promoted towards African Americans. So it kind of starts at the younger ages. Also, back in the 70s, when the marathon boom was really taking off, you had gentlemen like Frank Shorter and Bill Rogers winning the Boston and New York marathons, which then kicked off a whole culture of running through the suburbs, and a lot of white-collar workers uh, getting into it, running it after work, before work, and then it became really a, ca a Caucasian um, uh, sporting event and, and distance to do. If I were addressing the issue of how do we get more African Americans involved in the marathon, I would start maybe with uh, the issue of see who is who is running this sport now, who are winning, uh, and celebrate the fact that the Kenyans are dominating the sport, and they've used it not only as a uh, necessity of life in Kenya from, tr from village to village as transportation, but as a way to earn money uh, to live. Diabetes is the fifth deadliest disease in the United States. It has no cure. African Americans are 1.6 times more likely to have diabetes than non-Latino whites. Approximately 2.7 million, or 11.4% of all African Americans aged 20 years or older have diabetes. However, one third of them do not know it. Adults with diabetes have heart disease death rates two to four times higher than those without diabetes. And I think, I think a good way to market this sport to, um, uh, to black Americans is to, is, is to, through the schools, reach out to the young kids. Um, black Americans have, have produced uh, a lot of terrific athletes in many sports and in track, a uh, sport of which the marathon is, uh, is, is part. So I think that's one angle, that's one part to it. Um, so I think it's a sport that it is, it's kind of, it's, it's a sport where the door is wide open you don't need to be a certain weight or height in the sport, and you can kind of make yourself your own athlete. So it's a sport worth exploring. Well, working in the school environment, in the inner city schools, I feel that the schools are targeted to limit the children with the abilities that they may be able to do. The sports are very targeted to football, basketball, track, when children can be targeted to cross-country programs and open their horizons on different sports that can be played. And the way to do that, I think the Dade County schools and just schools across the country need to focus on opening all options to the children and giving them the availability to coaches who have passion and that want to train them on things like cross-country. Because they're, it's just mentally, if they feel that they're not able to play a different sport, because maybe the society hasn't set it up for them, they're going to feel it's a limitation. Once we move away those limitations, these kids are going to feel that cross country is the sport for them and that they can do it regardless of their skin color or their race. is a good way to get a you know in sh condition for track and field but in the process you might figure it out you have the talent to do a mile 5k 10k so don't just because you do track it doesn't mean you just have to stop and track go out and you know undiscover discover that stuff that you have within you because it's in our blood I think we could be a great runners and not just short distance but distance but you know you have to try I mean there's a bottom line is that there's not a I mean there's probably myself and Abdi and a few other ones that are African Americans that are trying this. But, you know, there was a um, Robert named Robert who was about four or five years ago that it was running really well. But other than that, it's, 
we don't try, and that's the bottom line. And we have to be exposed to that. We need to do seminars. We need to do expose to them. Go watch them. And uh, you know, the Boston Marathon, the New York Marathon, Chicago Marathon, whatever the local marathon might be. We have to be there, cheer us on. At the same time, kind of say, hey, if he could do it, why not me? Yeah, you know, because to be honest, I think is a, is a, is a, it's about the sports. A lot of the black, black American. They want to be a football player, basketball players, baseball players. Running is not the all. If they want to be a runner, they want to be sprinters. And that's why n not a lot of them run the marathons. Some of it may be cultural. I mean, I think that, that maybe running isn't a part of the culture. Now, of course, the interesting thing is that the, the dominant force in American road racing right now, or worldwide road racing, is are Africans. But somehow that hasn't made the connection in the African American or the, the broader minority community. So no, I, if I had an answer, we, we would go out and find them. The Boston Marathon is the world's oldest annual marathon and ranks as one of the world's most prestigious road racing events. The Boston Athletic Association manages this American sports classic, which is now sponsored by John Hancock Financial Services. The Boston Marathon has distinguished itself as the pinnacle event within the sport of road racing by virtue of its traditions, longevity, and method of gaining entry into the race. One of the amazing things about the marathon is it's always been an egalitarian sport. It's been open to everybody, regardless of their age, their ability, their social status, most importantly. It has always been the champion of the underdog. From the very first marathoner who won in 1896 in the first Olympic Games, Spiridon Luis was a peasant water carrier. The sport is amazing because it requires no money, n no shoes really even. A baby bikila won in Rome with no shoes. It, it, it's, it is the person who tries hardest and gets to the finish line. We don't have to join a country club. We don't have to be the right race or the right social class. So what has always been amazing to me in America is, is the fact that there have been so few minority participants, particularly black African Americans, you know, and uh, the only thing I can especially when there are great role models for them with, with the East Africans now, the Kenyans, the Ethiopians especially. The only thing I can think of is that perhaps it, it began mostly in the, the United States as, as a white sport. Um, there were a few exceptions, wonderful exceptions, like Ted Corbett or Tom Longboat, the Native American, who were, who were wonderful athletes um, and who triumphed. But why, why the others, I don't know, because I would think that it would appeal so much to them, um, who, who, people who are fighting for equality. Um, I think that's a, a good question. I, um, I wish more um, African Americans were running the marathon because it's, it's not a black-white thing. It's, um, they, they could be great at it. I mean, if you look at the, um, the best marathoners in the world, they're all from Africa, and they kick all the white guys' butts in the, you know, everywhere. And these, so these guys are tough tough, tough people, and um, I, all we need to do is make marathoning a cool sport in America. Right now, I think one of the problems is um, in the marathon, people think it's just skinny little white guys that uh, can't do anything else, but uh, that's, that's far from the truth. Um, like when I was in high school, I could dunk a basketball, and I got recruited to play basketball at in, a, in a few colleges, but I knew I was a little bit better runner, so I went down the running um, avenue, but the top, the top um, uh, marathoners in the world are stud athletes. It's just that we want the endurance way instead of, you know, football, basketball, soccer, things like that. I think there are a whole lot of reasons. And in fact, I've asked a lot of uh, African American athletes. And uh, the first thing I think about this is that it's cultural, that somehow currently it's perceived as, and I'll quote directly, as a white thing. And I've heard people say it has no flash, etc. And I think so. Uh, there's one aspect of it that is simply a community rejection of marathon running. But and I've talked with trainers, African American trainers, and their feeling is uh, part of this has to do with the whole scholarship uh, structure in high schools. For instance, if you're an African American, you're going to be encouraged to take up sprinting, not to take up uh, long distance running. And that's where the attention of the African American community is. So there's, uh, and that's where, you know, especially kids who are underprivileged, who don't have much money, if they want a scholarship to college, that's what they're told to do. And that's, that is the scholarship structure. So that's one aspect of it. There's the cultural aspect aspect of it. And um, 
I, I think those are the strongest reasons for it. There might be some other reasons too. It, I don't think these are absolute reasons, but for instance, when you're training for long distance running, you need large areas of safe neighborhoods. If you're poor and you're in a tough neighborhood, it's harder to run. Uh, if you And also if you come into uh, some of the white neighborhoods, there, people are still prejudiced and uh, you, it may inhibit runners uh, under those circumstances. But I think the larger issue is really that it's never be been to the African-American community a goal in sports, whereas sprinting, all the, dist uh, the uh, shorter distance sports have always been very prestigious among black Americans. I honestly don't know. I mean, I think uh, Americans in general, you know, uh, place things like football, baseball, basketball a lot higher than, than distance running. And, uh, you know, I know that... Uh, even when I was a kid, I am a distance runner now, you know, a professional distance runner now. When I was growing up, my dream wasn't to be a professional distance runner. It was to be, you know, when I was little, a quarterback or a pitcher for a baseball team or something like that. So I think that has a lot to do with it. I just haven't been exposed to it enough. I think they're very uh, uh, good at spinning, and they stay with spinning. The is, but I would bet that certainly in the city, probably a million or a million and a half African Americans uh, and may not, obviously not just from Africa themselves, from the Caribbean, of course. And we only see a, a small percentage of uh, blacks running in our race. And not quite sure why. I was discussing and thinking about that. And I think it has to do with, you know, who the role models are. Uh, I mean, some people aspire to be great athletes. Some people aspire just to be athletes. And if you don't have a role model either in your ethnic group or your community, and, you know, you can't relate to it. Obviously, uh, basketball has got tremendous role models. Track and field has the role models. Swimming doesn't, and so there's very few blacks in swimming. And I think it's the same case with distance running. I think there's a definite uh, increase in uh, Hispanic and Latin American runners. There's definitely an increase there. I think there's a decrease in African American runners. I'm... Uh, not sure why. I think it. Uh, there are many reasons for it. Um, I think some of them are social, some are economic. Just you know the way the way people are brought up kind of just uh, kind of reflects our society. You know, some people have more opportunities than others, and and I think that maybe fewer of them are running than even maybe 20 years ago, because they're just uh, they're channeled more into sports where they see economic opportunity, basketball, football, and. Baseball, not so much anymore, and I, I, and I think they're being shortchanged because there are so many other sporting opportunities out there that they could be enjoying and excelling in, frankly. Well, I think there's been a very small trend in minority participation, not as much as we would all like it to, uh, to be. I think it's been more in the Northeast where I live, Hispanic populations running more now than they used to. In the African American uh, segment, it's still sadly quite low. I think, I think the basic reason to begin with is socioeconomic. I think the running population is by and large people of middle class and above means who have the leisure time and the wherewithal and the education to believe that running is a great fitness and health activity. So yeah, if we could raise the economic level of all the uh, minority groups, then I think we'd see more participation in fitness activities. Of course, I recognize how hard that is. Bad news is that perhaps there haven't been enough mentors in the minority communities. The good news is that, that they are growing. And I know of efforts in various cities and various groups to get things rolling now. I think it's gonna be slow. I think it's gonna be a long haul. But uh, the rest of the country didn't start running all at once either. So if we take time and keep preaching the benefits of fitness, I think we'll have some successes. This is Alfred Francis. I am the race director for the Reggae Marathon in Jamaica. The Reggae Marathon is held on the first Saturday of every December in Negril, Jamaica. I must say it is a successful event, and I think it's the world's most exotic marathon. Our race is really diverse. We, um, we have a multiplicity of nationalities, people from all over the world, from Japan, Europe, Africa, um, the Caribbean, North and Central America, who, South America, who come to Reggae Marathon every year. I am particularly glad that we have spread our wings where the var variation is concerned because um, um, Jamaica is 
a wonderful country and our motto is out of many one people. So we are glad that we are able to attract and embrace such a wide um, nationality of participants. This is our fifth year in uh, Negril having the reggae marathon. I'm really excited to be here. Absolutely wonderful. It's the best. Glad to be here. It's a lot of fun. It's great. <laughs> um, black Americans um, are not a large grouping when it comes to distance running. Um, I don't know if it's the, 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 the economic of it, because you find that marathon runners fall in a certain economic strata. They have a lot of disposable income. I don't know how to compare the black Americans within that structure. But I know that distance running is, in Jamaica, we are known as a sprinting country. And I know that there is a love through the healthy lifestyle um, window for distance running. So we are getting ourselves engaged in a marathon running and we are promoting reggae, long distance running in Jamaica by having the reggae marathon as a sports tourism mechanism. And it has worked significantly. Um, we have tried to impact where the black American market is concerned, but um, we have no prejudice to who comes to our race. But the fact is that when you look at it, distance runners are Kenyans mainly and they come from one region of Kenya, which borders on the Uganda. It, it's a tribe that lives in both in Uganda and Kenya. Then you have the Ethiopians who dominate. So when you look at it as black people overall, you look at Nigeria. Nigeria doesn't produce distance runners. They produce sprinters just like Jamaica. So um, I don't think that black people on a whole like distance running when you look at it overall. So I think that it's something that we have to try to promote through the healthy lifestyle um, method and show them the value of physical exercise and the focus of distance running and how it can impact on the quality of one life. I think that one is, uh, I think that the secret of, of running marathon is just to, I think it's to train. Eh? You just look for a very good <laughs> altitude and then you train. There's no other secret about to, to run. <laughs> it's only to add training, hard working, commitments. I think that's all about to run and discipline. Laban, do you have anything uh, to add to that? Why well, America, which is a you know, nearly 300 million person population, Kenya has a 30 million person population, and yet most of the great distance runners are coming from East Africa. You know what? I can't say anything because Kirono is already say that I can say. But uh, the best thing is uh, it's to to know how to about their food that you can hit. That's the best thing, and, uh, and the training again. Because, you know, many people, they like to, to take every, every, they take all of, a, any kind of, of food, and it is not special for the athlete. So you must select the food that you can eat, and you train very well, and you must be, be very serious in your training. That's all. Why don't we ask the, the, the Eastern European women uh, are every bit, in many ways, as, uh, as good as the East African men and, and women. Uh, maybe Lubov. Lubov, why, why the Russian women have been so good in, in marathoning over the years? Can you, is there an explanation that you can point to? Um, 
Um, the life in Russia is difficult, and it's only one way for some of the women to survive in Russia so, uh, to establish themselves. It's uh, to be an elite runner. So it's. I think we see the pattern. Poor country, difficult life, bootstrap sport. Running's like boxing. You look at American immigration patterns, and you see all the boxers coming from the different poor countries in Europe and championship boxers. <coughs> Running's like boxing, a lot of training. <laughs> I think that the biggest barrier for individuals to compete in a long distance race, whether it's a triathlon, a marathon, something of that sort, a lot of it comes from thinking and mental and not believing in yourself. Certainly there are some health conditions sometimes that uh, if they're acute, why you can't compete in one of these long uh, races. But if you get that under control, there are plenty of people who have had heart attacks that run marathons. But the best thing is if you can start young and early and, uh, and start becoming uh, physically active. And it's amazing what people can do if they take the time to train appropriately. Most people can do very long distance races. Myth, major myth. When we look at uh, the physiological uh, components, uh, an African American and a non African American, they're similar as far as bone structure, as far as uh, the organ structure, things like that. Major myth. However, when you look at what's accepted within a community, as we mentioned before, uh, if we look at the marathon course, we'll probably have 100 times more spectators on the north side half of the course than the south half of the Chicago Marathon course. It's simply social acceptance. Physiologically, no difference. Uh, vessel size, no difference. The way the heart pumps, no difference. I'm getting a doctorate in that, and trust me, I've held hearts in my hand, I know there's no difference. So when we get down to the basics, there's no difference. It's merely a matter of how, how is it uh, received by our peers. Um, I don't have a scientific answer to that, but I, I say it's a myth mainly because I just think that, you know, we become overwhelmed with the thought of running 26.2 miles, but we all have the capability to do that. And I, I realized that the first time I attempted the, the effort. So definitely, I feel like if we put in the training and we have the proper support, then we can do it as many times as anybody else. Myth or reality? Oh, absolutely, man. <laughs> given the, I, I believe given the opportunity and a, and a, and a proper outlet, you certainly are going to find that uh, I think African Americans will certainly excel at this uh, sport also. It's just given the opportunity and given the social acceptance. None at all. Um, you know, we all know that they're of African descent and we understand the uh, abilities of the Africans. And so I would think it would translate to the, uh, the Americans as well. No physical limitations that that stop any group from participating in marathons. Uh, clearly, when you look at the world of competitive marathoning, uh, many of the best athletes are people of color, and athletes of all races have succeeded at the very highest level. Whether we're talking about championships, uh, or world records, uh, or setting the pace uh, for the the greatest uh, in competition in the marathon. Well, you know, anyone that has heart disease or someone who's had a heart attack uh, doesn't mean that their existence is confined to sitting around and pampering themselves. In fact, it's quite the opposite. People should be physically active, and that includes a regular exercise program. So if someone's interested in running, having heart disease uh, doesn't necessarily preclude their participating in running. In many situations, they would be encouraged to do that. I have many patients, some of whom have had heart attacks or bypass surgery, uh, that are active uh, runners, uh, some of them even marathon runners. Uh, I think it just requires um, a close follow-up with their doctor, periodic stress tests to make sure that things are okay, uh, and that the running can be done in a safe fashion. Uh, everyone always refers to, well, look what happened to Jim Fix. 
but I think in investigating the situation with Jim Fix, uh, he was someone who felt that the running provided him all the treatment that he needed for his heart disease. And he really never followed with his physician and ignored that aspect of his care. So um, I, I think, you know, continued exercise and running is something that's okay for someone with heart disease and probably encouraged. Anybody can run long distance if they train for it. No one is uh, 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 put here to just to run long distance or short distance. You have to train whatever you do. And uh, I think that if that, uh, 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 that goes along for black Americans as well as uh, 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 white Americans. So it really doesn't make any difference who you are. You have to train. More of a mindset that when kids are raised here, if you're, say, Latino or white or whatever, you're the slow guy, therefore you're going to be running distance. On the other hand, when you're out there in those places that I mentioned, those people were thought of as endurance people, so therefore they go into the endurance sports such as 10,000 meters, 5,000 meters, marathon, and so forth. So it's more of a, it's more of a society mindset rather than actual physical ability or whatever you want to call it. So, I mean, I've always believed that we have the kids here that whether they be black, Latinos, and so forth, they should be able to do distance. Our program at Oak Park River Force, we've had a, a lot of African-American kids that have, that have run distance for us and uh, have done very well. But I think it, <coughs> excuse me, I think it's more of a societal thing. The image of, yeah, if you're a black kid and you're, you're running distances, obviously you weren't gifted in terms of speed, in terms of having coordination and so forth and so on. And I think a lot of kids are embarrassed. Well, if I'm not good enough to be a sprinter, then I'm not good enough to, 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 do, uh, to run at all. But really, if, if people were to tap into that, um, into, into, the, into the black runners, I think we would, we would go back to, to being just as dominant, if not better than the Africans, because we have one, better facilities, two, we have more ways than to support them in terms of furthering their, their distance careers. So, I mean, I, I always feel that if ever we can turn that corner of changing that mindset, that, it, that there is nothing wrong with being a, a great distance runner and being black also, that's, that it's a great thing. And the justification a lot of kids use is, well, those guys are Africans, all oh, those guys are from there. They don't view them as being black, but they really are, as they are basically black and black people are black people. And it should be no different whether they're from the European continent, the African continent, whether they're living in Canada, whether they're living in Chicago, they're just as gifted as those other guys. It's just a matter of tapping into that. Uh, the Nike Run Hit Wonder, for example, we trained over on the south side in Hyde Park. And we had a wonderful group. I mean, we had probably 80 or 90 percent of the 50 or 60 people there were from the African American community. They had a great time. That's the way it's going to have to be done. It's going to have to be done on a grassroots level. We're going to have to get out there into the community and, and express the kind of joy that, that everybody that's in the running community is feeling about running and see if we can make it contagious. I got into running five years ago, but I've been a personal trainer and a fitness instructor for 18 years. So I started running, uh, I had my third child, and I needed to lose the weight, and running was the fastest way to do it, because I didn't have to I could go right out my front door. And, that's, and I saw how easy it was for me to run, and then I just took up marathon training from there. Where I live in San Diego, it is a predominantly white, area and I'm pretty much usually at these races I don't see any other black people besides myself so I guess to answer your question I don't see very many minorities no I really don't know why I think it's a white sport <laughs> I don't know I just um, I you know what I really don't know the answer to that question Kind of like tennis and golf, that's what I think of with running. I don't know. Running for me has uh, pretty much, I can say it changed my life. And it has gotten to be a lifestyle. I, um, again, started running like two miles. 
then I ran my first 10K run, I had so much fun that I was hooked on running right there because of the fitness benefits that I got from it. I was all happy about that. And, um, you know, a lot of people told me that I had really did good with that. So I got encouragement now coming from uh, people that I know have been running for years. So I just felt that I would need to just keep coming out and um, just go to some different races and see what it was all about. I was hooked. Stress relief was gone. I mean, that was my stress reliever. I was getting in shape. I was just feeling a whole lot of small benefits from it. My whole mood, uh, my physical appearance, uh, just the way I thought about things and the way I approached things. Was, everything was started to change. So again, I can say running really changed my life. It's just a life an awareness. A lot of people aren't aware that the opportunity is there. Yeah. You know, I think it's it's a shift in lifestyle. A lot of African Americans don't have the 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 fitness lifestyle. The because it's a choice. You know, and a lot of people don't make that choice to make that change. It's exposure. I think it's a lot about exposure to the sport. And that's it. Yeah. Uh, I find a lot of. You know, the weird part is more African Americans are involved, are closer to middle age, late 30s, early 40s. You know, it's not a lot of, I mean, I'm only 31, and I'm one of the youngest people in my group. So, don't have time, too busy doing other things, I guess. I've done Chicago a couple of times, the rock and roll in Arizona, and the Marine Corps in D.C. The club I, I started with is a, a black club, and the... The, the women, there were four women in the club when I started, and they all ran marathons. So I was used to seeing African American and black people running in my neighborhood and in, my, in, in Cincinnati. And so we've spread out to Dayton and Louisville and Cleveland, and uh, now the National Black Marathoners Association is involved in our, we're involved with their running club too. Eleventh, my eleventh marathon, and my fourth Boston. So I ran Boston last year. I qualified in Detroit, in, um, and when, he, when I qualified in Detroit, I was qualified for two years. So I ran last year, and, I, and I'm running again tomorrow. Wow, it's a lot of fun. I just completed my fourth Boston marathon. I've done about eleven altogether, eleven marathons altogether. So this is my fourth Boston, and. Um, I'm looking forward to running another marathon next year, sometime was, next year. How was the course? How was today? The course was nice because it was cool out there today, and uh, and the spectators are wonderful. They were all over the place, just everywhere, and just yelling. And if you, if you had to stop and walk, they'd tell you to get going and call everybody's name, and it was a lot of fun. My time was uh, about 4:42. <laughs> Not what I had hoped for, but uh, it's, res it's respectable. I decided when I became uh, 40, I wanted to start running long distance. And after uh, two years, I ran the Cobra City Marathon. And since that time, I ran 25 straight Cobra City Marathons. And my total marathons is 67 marathons and 150 kilometers. I'm one of the first uh, black race directors of any major marathon in the country. And it's a great job. And I look at it as not a job. It's fun for me because I've been a lifelong runner. I've completed all 21 of the Los Angeles marathons, including the one this year. The position of running a marathon has a huge benefit for everyone, especially in our black community because of the health benefits of having a healthier lifestyle pays off uh, for all of us uh, to the tune that, you know, this year I'm 52 years old. And a lot of people say, well, you're like you're 40. Well, I started running way back in, you know, many years ago and long distance running uh, when I turned 30. And as long as you get the proper training in anything, uh, whether it's uh, golf, you know, baseball, basketball, you know, football, but for me it's running. As long as you get the proper training, uh, the health benefits are enormous. Uh, and I think for the black community, 
we need some type of direction to change a family history of you know illnesses whether it's high blood pressure obesity or whatever and somebody within that family tree line has to make a decision to break that cycle and so who will it be so for my family tree it was me I made that decision because my family had has and still have a history of you know high blood pressure and you know heart disease some to some degree so you know marathon running for me has allowed me to monitor my lifestyle closer and have a greater impact on my family's future and my generation's future going forward. In 1981 that was my first marathon and from that time up to now I've done 49 marathons and I'm looking to do my 50th in the year of 2007. Um, it's interesting that people are running marathon today as opposed to it was 20 years ago. Um, I did it because I felt like it was something that I wanted to keep my health well and train with my body and my body well and train with my health so that's why I was doing the marathons but uh, looking at the people the number of people who are in these races today you don't see as many uh, African Americans running these races as they do a uh, non-minorities and I think that's something that people should pay attention to because what I do understand from the medical standpoint is that if you are in shape then your body is in better tune uh, diabetes is a thing that's running higher among the African American race and I think if they get themselves in shape of this way it probably would help a lot. I've been an athlete all my life, uh, basically a baseball player, uh, basketball, uh, tennis, um, but running was last. I, I used running to just kind of build my endurance up and I would, if I ran over two miles at one time I would be happy. Uh, never considered a marathon, never thought that was possible. Uh, I thought that was a different type of individual that did a marathon. I thought you had to uh, be well trained and a runner for years and years and years. Then all of a sudden uh, it was brought to my attention that maybe I should try longer distances and I, you know I said, well, fine, I, I'll try a, a 10K or I'll try half a marathon, and I really enjoyed it. Uh, one of my concerns as a, a runner was, what do I do for four hours? You know, can I entertain myself for four hours? Can I run for actually four hours? I just don't believe that, that athletes or people who participate in sports, um, black Americans anyway, uh, just don't know what they would do for four hours. I mean, it's just a thought. Are we afraid to be by ourselves for four hours <laughs> running a marathon? Uh, do we think that our body may not hold up? Uh, do we, um, you know, are, are we, do we think we're not built for marathons? I really don't know what it is, but after the first marathon I did was a sub four hours. Once I, at that point, I felt that I could do this, and I enjoyed doing it, and it's something that I would do on and on and on. So now after 11 marathons, I feel pretty content that I can run a marathon. But running that first one brings up a lot of demons, and it brings up a lot of anxiety in a person because you really don't know if you're going to make it, and, uh, and perhaps that is one of the fears that we have is that, you know, can we really do this? Or are we afraid to attempt something that we never tried before? I think if they, I think if they, if they came and support the local marathons in their cities and see the impact what it brings, um, um, I think that would help. Um, and see, and just to see how fun it is, you know, how, how positive it is for the city for economically, as far as revenues bringing to the city to create new jobs, you know, for the mayors and things like that. So I think in that aspect, uh, uh, I think it'd be awesome if, if, if people would take the time to just do research on what Marathon's all about. I think they might end up liking it. My name's Margaret Sue Bods, guys. I'm a Lieutenant Colonel in the United States Army. I run for the All Army Marathon and Track Team. I started running when I was 12. I'm 42 years old now. 
Um, I started running the 400, 800, and up until 1998, I decided that I was going to run for San Francisco. Actually, what happened was I moved, I got transferred from Atlanta to San Francisco, and I joined all women's competitive team, and we had a two-mile run for time trials, and out of maybe 80 females that participated, I came in first that day, and somebody said, hey, you know, black folks don't run distance. What are you doing winning it here? And I said, oh, I think, I think we do. I ran my first marathon in 1996 just to run it. But when I did go to San Francisco in 1998, somebody said that African Americans don't run distance. And I wanted to prove her wrong. I did some research. And at the time, I was running all army track and field, which is what they do is they, they get the top runners around the world that's in the military to represent their team. They, they take the top four. And I decided I wanted to train for, after she told me that African Americans don't run distance, don't run marathons, I decided that I was going to run a marathon and I was going to try to qualify for the All-Army team. I did, and I, when I qualified, I went to the World Games, came in 10th place in 1998 in Croatia. Um, ever since that, I tried to qualify for the Olympic time trials. I've run, this is my 50th marathon, thank you very much. And um, I've always tried for, I've always tried to qualify for Olympic time trials. It's a two, you have to run 250, I run it three hours. It's very difficult for me because I am a Lieutenant Colonel in the United States Army. They don't give you extra time to train. You gotta wake up early by yourself at four o'clock and get out there and do the training. Then you've gotta prepare and you gotta go to work and your work lasts from anywhere from 7.30 or earlier, depending on what the mission is. And um, I'm going to tell you right now, I work for uh, plans officer for General Andre, who everybody knows from Katrina. And it's very difficult because when mission calls, you have to work. And it's hard to balance um, life and marathon running and, uh, and family life as well. Let's see. I also coach. Um, I have a business, Fit to Run Long, and I... I focus on African Americans running the distance, and I have several uh, sisters and brothers uh, that run on our team, and a lot of them run marathons. Also, manage I, I manage African Amer Africans actually Kenyans that are my friends, and what I do is what we try to promote. We we really do. We try to promote women and men, sisters and brothers. Now I really get a high when I go out there and you don't see too many of us running marathons and somebody's on the sideline saying, go my sister, go my sister. I'm like, yeah. And I can tell you, when I tried to qualify for Olympic time trials at the Marine Corps Marathon, I was right up there. I had to run a three hour, or 250. I was trying to run three, uh, a 250 and I was one of the top three at the Marine Corps at that time. And I recall um, one of the the most emotional experience that I encountered running it was at the 10 mile marker and there is a sister out there and she was screaming she was screaming trying to touch me and she's go 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 and she was very hysterical because she saw African-American women run and all I could do because I was focused on running was just wink at her and smile but that, I like that feeling, especially when you're out there and you're running and you see so many different people uh, participating that aren't African American, and, but you see somebody on the sideline that, uh, that is African American, they're, they're cheering for you and they're saying, go, 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 and they do it all the time. Do to get more people to run, I go and I, you have to promote it. You got to advertise it. You got to say, hey, my brother says you could do anything you want. The only thing that holding you back from doing, accomplishing anything is your own laziness. And what I do is I start a program and I show it. I prove it to them. I start them. I don't roll them out of bed and say, hey, you're going to run a marathon. You're going to run 10, 10 miles. What I do is I tell them we're going to start from scratch. And I'm like, you're as if they were in kindergarten. And what I do is I design a program, a walk run program. And then every week, every month, they get stronger and stronger. Their confidence level gets up. And then I focus on a 5K. If they're not, a, if they haven't been running, um, I, we focus on a goal. Maybe finish a 
a five mile at the end of the month or two months, depending on whether or not how their body's handling the distance. And what you have to do is you got to sit there and you got to give them a presentation and tell them that they can do it and then show them the benefits. And that's what I do. And they, and you know, once they say, yeah, yeah, I can do it, and they believe in themselves, they'll do it. Because I'm telling you right now, I got about, I would say 15 brothers and sisters that run distance. And we focus on the Army 10 miler. And then once they, once they learn that they can run 10 miles, okay, you run 10 miles, you can run two miles because all of them in the mil majority of them are in the military. You can run 10 miles. If you can run 10 miles, you can run a half marathon and a marathon. Keys in the training and confidence and, and telling them and not brainwashing it, but convincing them that they can do anything. issues um, African-American women and they I mean I'm an African-American woman and I run but I know that there are issues with your hair and you know you don't want your hair to get messed up so it's, it's a cultural thing that we have to change so I, I really believe any of that comes from the youth and introducing them to it um, introducing them to it as a, a lifestyle is for fitness for health and not just folks that are going to go out and be cross-country runners but that you know this is something that you can learn to do and you can participate in and hopefully make it a, a lifestyle so that when you get older you can do and you, we're talking about recreational runners now and that's something that you can do so I think supporting youth programs is the way to um, to introduce it to more folks and get more folks involved there's just not a lot of opportunity for young african-american children right now to participate Part of it is, um, well, I think in sports in general, particularly African American women, it's always an issue with hair. Um, you know, our hair is not wash and wear, and so if you're sweating a lot, you know, and you're going to the hairdresser every other week, it becomes a little bit of a problem. Um, you don't want to walk around with the frizzies, and so you know, as a trend, you see people who get more and more active. They get rid of their perms, they kind of cut their hair off, or they do other things like braids to allow them to be active and still look professional. 
Um, the other part of it is I think that, um, you know, most of the people who ended up being in our group were probably anywhere between their late 20s and 50. And that's um, a time in life when you're really concentrating on your career and family. And I think in general, people probably become less active during that time. But I also think in the African American community, as you know, heart disease is rampant, diabetes is rampant, and, you know, in the United States, obesity is rampant. And so I think that, um, and also with school, you know, a lot of schools are dropping their um, athletic programs. And so I think that people are just kind of focusing on their um, jobs and their life is becoming more sedentary. And after a point, you know, after you're 50 pounds overweight and you, you know, have trouble walking five blocks, you're not really that motivated to get up and start running. And I'm following you. African American ideal of beauty with regards to women many times includes a requirement with regards to size. A skinny African American woman in some communities is not seen as attractive or as, as attractive, if you will, as the one who has meat on her bones. Um, many times the supermodel type frame is seen as unattractive in the African American community because they don't have the curves that are seen as desirable. So I've had many runners who've come in the past and said that there, there are significant others that male friends, husbands or otherwise have complained about the fact that they've lost so much weight while running and their proportions, i.e. their hips and their buttocks have changed size. So sometimes there's a social pressure from your significant other not to lose weight. Part two is that when you do look at these social groups within the community, uh, as Alex mentioned before, we'll have hundreds of people who will come out for a basketball game. But if you have a 5K in the same community, you'll have less than uh, 20 or 30 parents to come out. Uh, at the Chicago Marathon, I would dare say that less than one-tenth of one percent of the spectators are out, out there are African American along the entire course. So that being the case, if there isn't the support and if there isn't the uh, acceptance within your community, you're going to stray away from, uh, you know, from a sport such as endurance running because it does take up your time. And if you are receiving negative peer pressure, you want to simply abo avoid that even though there may have been positive health effects by making that change. I think that the elementary schools, the teachers really need to start pushing physical education. You know, one of the unfortunate things about education in, in the uh, 21st century now is that so many programs have been stripped out of our school system. And I'm not talking only about physical education, music, and art. And uh, I would like, to, I came from a school with a liberal arts background, Carleton College. I would really like to see more opportunity for. Uh, people to participate in sports and uh, just physical exercise. When I was in high school and even when I got to college because I was a student of the Olympics there's a fellow who went to Southern Illinois who was on the 1964 Olympic team at 5,000 meters was an African-American guy named Oscar Moore and at that time it was very unusual uh, and then Several years later, another African-American runner who was a very good international runner, a guy named Herm Atkins, who still is a very, very good age group runner in Seattle. And, and so I, I think um, in Boston, for example, New Balance has brought people out over the years to the Newton kids race where they would bring kids out from the inner city of Boston, mostly African American, give them shoes and have them participate in the races. And my view is it's, it's really more a matter of exposing kids to it. If you look at the Kenyans and Tanzanians and Ethiopians and Eritreans, I don't think there's much difference between them and African Americans, you know, in the sense of would they like to be runners? Would their, could their kids grow up to be runners? Well, I think it's a question of exposure. Well, I think to get more black Americans engaged in road running, um, you'd have to take away some of the traditional black sports like baseball and basketball, football. Um, all, the, all the glory seems to go to the athletes in those sports. Um, when black Americans think of distance running, they might think of the African nations but not necessarily the United States. And I think what you need to do is make it more accessible. And you have to show 
give the black americans the access whether it's through high schools or whether running clubs for those of a lot of black americans go on to college but they'll go into football some of them could be very good runners you know like ronaldo nehemiah who was a great hurdler but when black americans think running they think the sprints and so to break that mold you know may take some more time so you might take some of the african runners and introduce them to some of the running meccas in the united states and just have them do running tutorials and how it fits into their lifestyles and something like that but you know until this boston marathon you know and the resurgence of american distance running you know there hasn't been great successes for americans whether they be black or white and now maybe we'll see a difference with meg's great finish and and the rest of the americans we had five americans in the top 10 with meb leaving leading the charges so that could change um but you know you have to show them show them to the door so to speak they have to be ushered to the door you know you have to put less emphasis on the traditionally strong american sports which are again baseball football and basketball parts of the marathon one is the fitness and health part and the other is the competitive part and I think, you know, in terms of your health and fitness, walking and running are a great way to keep your weight and blood pressure at their best. Running distance, you know, over a period of time, it doesn't have to be fast, just steady. Builds your heart. It's the best thing you can do to protect yourself from having a heart attack. It also helps you keep your weight at its very best. It's the best way to keep your weight steady and to keep your diet steady. To it. We're, we're making an attempt ourselves working on the inner city schools. We have no middle school physical education programs at all. They've done away with, which is a shame. And so what we've done is in the inner city schools, we started a program with our New York Road Runners Foundation, and we're now up to 100 schools with about 5,000 kids. And they tend to be uh, black and Hispanic, because that's the people who aren't going to private schools. And it's not necessarily a competitive program, but more of a socialization program, getting kids to respect each other. You'll have, you know, people who are heavy set, some people who are very good, and just all working together. People who are shy that all of a sudden come out of their shells because all of a sudden they can do something they couldn't do before. And their grades can commonly change. We see an increase in that. You're getting to less fights. I mean, it's a good socialization program. But again, it's just a, a microcosm of what needs to be done in our city. And I'm sure it's the same in most cities across the country. I think coaches play a, a big role. Um, you, you you have your, your PE coach or your you know your teacher even in the school that says, oh, you're 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 black American. You definitely should be uh, running track. Or you should be doing the hundred or the two hundred. Or you know, better yet, let's play football. You know, that's that's where the money's at. You know, that's your out. You know, type of thing. And and uh, and I don't think the, the the white kid gets that you know that that same that same uh, push. And 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 I think. Whereas the school plays a certain role, I also think that even even in the homes, the parents say, "Well, you know, you're you're you're, you're that's where you can make it big. You know, you can be a star football player, you can be a star basketball player, and those are the, that's what's pushed down the, the kids' throats. So in their minds, even if they might be talented or they feel they're that they're good runners, as as I've experienced in some smaller schools I've gone to go talk to, or elementary or middle school, where the kids are you know eager to run miles and laps. I've done six laps today. You know, that that, that the kids later on push to football." Because because the running back is the one that's going to make the money, not the running, you know, not the running star. So. ...that the black Americans put on themselves are the ones that they put on themselves and the ones that they're passing on to their children. Black Americans need to take down these limitations that they feel that they have because coming from a city where there's many, many diversities, many cultures coming from South America all over the world, once those limitations are taken off and they actually really believe and pass it on to their children, the education is the key, not just, you know, making it on the Dolphins team, not making it on the Miami Heat team because the amount of people that actually make it to that level it's so 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 small that what they need to teach their children is that with the education 
and going to college and moving forward and using the sports as a place to be a team leader as a place to know how to work in a team, they need to take the limitations off themselves. I feel that the rest of the society doesn't put limitations on them, they're putting limitations on themselves, they're passing it on to the children. Once we find the formula to break down these limitations, and that's by taking black Americans now that have children, and for them to understand it, and they pass it on to their children, I think that you know, they're going to be in good shape, just like the people coming from Argentina, Venezuela, Colombia, Nicaragua. You know, they're all coming to Miami, and they're all making it by working hard. And as a matter of fact, I would say that they're at more of a disadvantage coming from these countries because they don't speak the language. Black Americans speak English. Black Americans are from America, and they live in America. These are people we're talking about that just got to this country. They don't speak English. They make the effort to go out, educate themselves, educate their children, and they're here to make it better for us. My parents came to America because they wanted me to live in a wonderful country and to have the advantages that other people don't have. And that's what the black Americans need to realize, that they are already here, they just need to take advantage of it. In order to immediately go away from the program as we had it, uh, someone tried to drill into me in the Army many years ago, whenever something changes, make a rapid assessment of the situation and do what you need to do, mister. Now, we were going to make a presentation. The uh, ordinance hadn't arrived, but now it has. So, Major Freeman, I'd like it if you would come up here and we will present to you your number for Monday. Guy, you want to get up here and get in the picture so it looks good? The essential prerequisite for military service is physical fitness. Running is the core of training, thus men and women in the armed services are compelled to run long and hard. Members of the Army come from all over Iraq to run in the Talil Boston Marathon at the Talil Air Base. When the Boston Marathon is celebrated on Patriots Day in Boston, it is also celebrated in Iraq with a marathon run through parts of the desert. The Turin Kaut Marathon is run simultaneously with the Honolulu Marathon. The Baghdad Boulder 10K race is celebrated as is the Boulder Boulder in Colorado. The Air Force and Army come together to run the Army 10 Miler, which is held in the streets of Iraq.
is your podium. Top five male, top five female. Boulder, Boulder, Baghdad, 2006. Do you run a lot? Uh, not enough. <laughs> I've, uh, you know, I've, I've, for the last couple of years, I've had foot problems and finally had the surgery. So this is kind of my statement for coming back and getting back in shape. So I thought this was a great event to uh, be a part of. I was going to ask, what is it? Boulder Boulder is apparently a very big deal in Boulder, Colorado. Have really? you ever run the event before? No. Before, but, I mean, what do you think about this? They've got like 600 people right yeah, there. Yeah, it's just exciting. I, you know, I was kind of dreading it when I woke up this morning. But after showing up and seeing all of the people and the music, uh, I'm pumped. I'm excited. So I look forward to uh, making it a decent race. What do you think about it being here and being run in Boulder, Colorado, too? It's going to be on the same track. Yeah, that's, that's exciting. Um, I, and it's, it's a way for us to connect back home, too. I, I think this is a great event to, do, to be a part of. Yeah. You've run Boulder, Boulder before, yes, in Colorado? I have, back in probably the late 70s, early 80s, when I was young and had my health. How did this one compare to the one in Boulder, Boulder? This was a lot slower, and it seemed like it was a lot longer. Oh, the, Bo the Boulder Boulder is a great race, and for, for the people of Boulder, Colorado to help sponsor this out here for us on Memorial Day, uh, I think it's a really great thing. And also gives us the opportunity to thank the magnificent men and women of the armed forces that are out here today in Iraq, helping the Iraqi people build a better life. What do you think about the soldiers out here actually ran in this heat? I can't believe how hot it is. It's evidence it get? how much it's sweating. <laughs> it, get? it was hot, there's no, no question about it, but the soldiers are in great shape, and they left me in the dust. Um, it's something that I want to accomplish. I've never done a marathon. I want to do a marathon, and that's a big thing in my life. I've never done a marathon. I never thought I could do it, but I'm trying to accomplish it tomorrow. Um, do you expect to be able to get the chance to do something like this during your tour? No, never. Never. How did you find out about the marathon? Um, I came down here, posted up, had word of mouth, really, by word of mouth. And uh, how did you end up uh, being able to make it down here for the tour? Um, it, was, it was by accident, but I, can't, I got here, though. So, you ended up running a convoy down here? And um, I flew down here from um, Washington. Uh -huh. Then from Washington, I went to Balad. Balad brought me here. All right. Um, and and uh, how do you feel about having competitions like this in Iraq? I think it's a great morale booster. Good morning, my name is Miranda Raouf. I am an assistant principal at Manual Arts High School with Students Run LA. I am their leader. This is the only program with Students Run LA where you have under 18 year olds running the Los Angeles Marathon or running a marathon. The program has been in inception for more than 15 years. Over 2,500 kids run the marathon every year here in Los Angeles. You have high schools, junior high schools, they're teacher leaders. You also have uh, chaperones and other facilitators who help with the program. Students Run LA program got started with a, about three men who were very, very interested in making sure that students got more than just a high school diploma. They wanted to give them some goal setting ideas, give them discipline, and then to look at those students at risk to make sure that people knew they could do it. When we were first approached about the popular challenge, uh, we got excited because uh, we've been in Los Angeles for 35 years. and. We've been a bank for 112 years, and all throughout our history we've been involved in communities, and this was one more opportunity to reach out to a community that's very diverse, much like the markets that we serve, and we're excited about being part of Los Angeles and being part of the LA Marathon. Uh, next up, uh, a man who I'm not sure when he launched this event in 1986 realized that we'd be celebrating his child's 21st birthday. But he's a proud father with very, very good reason, president of uh, the City of Los Angeles Marathon, Dr. William Burton, with his Irish clover. Hi, Bill. 
Thanks, Tony. Um, if I was a student at Manual Arts and I was the first one from Manual Arts to finish, I want a week out of class. <laughs> Forget the breakfast thing. I'd like to welcome everybody to the 21st year of this event. I just can't imagine that uh, I was only 15 when I started this event. And it, it just seems like yesterday. Um, Students Run LA has become an integral part of my life and for good reason. When you take the kids that run this event and see how they train and how they give up their time, they do not even know what the historical statistic is for their completion rate at high school and for their entry into college. But it's staggering. When I was told this morning by Lieutenant Governor Cruz Bustamante that he had reviewed the numbers and that 90% of the students run and students run LA and finish complete college. This, is, this program is called Students Run LA. And students Run LA uh, do actually several uh, events, but the biggest event is, of course, the LA Marathon. So we get involved in 5Ks, 10Ks, uh, half marathons, etc. And it's sort of a uh, kind of like a club, but it's a very large club, and you have very motivated students that learn all about what it takes to uh, put that together. And as, as you can imagine, it's, uh, it takes commitment and dedication not only on the part of students, but also on the part of the folks who are supporting them. You know, it's, uh, it's something when you start something in life, you, you, a lot of the students here are learning about, uh, not only about desire, and we talked about ganas, and we talked about how you have to train, and, and one, of the, one of the young athletes said, you know, I'm not training just to not finish, I'm gonna finish. You know, and it's, there's so much that comes from that, and you know, all the pieces that come from doing something like this, it's gotta take a special somebody who's willing to nurture it and to, to make it theirs. And to be able to have not only students and runners, but the, all the inspiration that comes from, a, from an event like this. We saw a, a person who had had a, a heart attack, and he's gonna be running the marathon. We saw people at the expo, you know, who have autism and, and, and Alzheimer's and, and so many things that are inspirational. Yeah, we have the mutant runners that are going to be at the beginning of the pack, you know, I mean, the, the animals, the horses, the mutants, right? Yeah, they're going to finish. But what about all of those wonderful stories? And all that has...
keep up with me. Okay. Keep going. Don't let me down. Ready? Here we go. On your marks, you set. Let's go. Let's go. By acclamation, Michael Jordan is the greatest basketball player of all time. His popularity, influence, and charisma redefined what a superstar could be called in any sport. We asked several people, if Michael Jordan made an announcement that he was going to run a marathon, how many African Americans do you think would come out and run a marathon? If Michael Jordan decided to run a marathon, um, that would be amazing because I think um, I, I sport of running marathons or uh, long distance races would um, increase immensely. I mean, we would have uh, uh, people who never ever dreamed of running would come out and try it because Michael said, uh, this is the thing to do. And uh, Michael has a following. Even people are playing basketball who probably never dribbled a ball before until they became an adult. So as Michael decides to do a marathon, I think we would have a, a, a huge following. People would start uh, trying to run marathons. They would try to read a lot of, get a lot of information regarding marathons, um, how to train for them, uh, um, um, uh, what areas to run in, what, what, what races to run in, uh, what coaches to train with, and, uh, and who's Michael using. And also, all the running gear, uh, the sales would pick up in addition to uh, uh, races, of, uh, entries into races. If a, if a celebrity like a Michael Jordan or LeBron James were to run a marathon, do you think that would help to increase running participation within the African American community? I think having my, Michael, you know, Michael Jordan or, or LeBron James or, or, you know, or any, you know, black American stars, I think that will definitely, you know, attract more black American to, to come and run. And I think it's our part also to do, you know, to do, to do some of, you know, to, to give them more information, more health, health interest that you can get out of running and that way we can, we can attract more. Great. Michael Jordan to come run the IMG New York City Marathon. <laughs> if, if Michael Jordan ran New York or ran Chicago or ran Boston or ran Berlin or ran London, it would be huge. Huge. You can't understate the power of celebrity, particularly in the United States. We're a star culture and the more leaders that can come out and show what they're made of, the more kids they're going to inspire to get healthier and fitter. Michael Jordan, he, he's got a lot of influence. I'd say that he, he and Oprah Winfrey, Oprah Winfrey, you know, everybody, you can, I can tell, I tell a lot of my runners and women, not just African American too, um, hey, the Oprah Winfrey ran a marathon. I know you can, you know, and she's got a lot of influence. I'm sure he does too. If Michael Jordan picked up a pair of shoes, and ran the Chicago Marathon. All he had to do was put the word out that he was gonna do that, and I would believe we would pick up another five, 6,000 African-American runners just to come out and support what Michael was doing, get inspired by Michael, because he's a big inspiration to African-Americans just by being a, not just a basketball player, but an athlete and a, as a black role model. So Michael Jordan, can, he can pull him out there, and I would see if I can run right beside him. See if uh, maybe that I can inspire some more to come out at the same time. Hey, how many people would be motivated by the participation of Michael Jordan in a major city marathon? But I think it's safe to say, given the impact that P. Diddy and Oprah had on awareness of marathon running, on the healthy benefits of marathon running and training, that if Michael Jordan were to announce that he was going to run the LaSalle Banks Chicago Marathon, it really would invigorate whole new populations, young people. Uh, African Americans and all Americans to not only pay attention to his quest to complete a marathon, but to be motivated by his commitment to fitness. Well, that would be interesting. I think that they would turn out de definitely because. And but but you know, here's an example: like P. Diddy, who could be a bigger star than P. Diddy? And did he bring out thousands and thousands of African Americans? No, he didn't. But he they sh he sure brought them out to cheer along the route. Oh, there's a lot of people who come out, man. So many. You 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 won't even. You can't even count it, you know, just they only, 
If Michael Jordan ran, I think every little kid is not going to run it again. Because just Michael Jordan did it. If Michael Jordan or Tiger Woods or somebody wanted to run the LaSalle Bank Chicago Marathon, I bet thousands upon thousands of more um, African Americans would be uh, signing up and donating it next year because all of a sudden it would be cool because these guys are cool stud athletes and everybody loves them. I mean, they, they, they transcend race, Tiger Woods and Michael. They're just on it, man. They're the man. They, I look up to those guys. And, uh, you know, if I could play basketball with Michael, I might not be running the marathon. But if, if he did do it, there'd be thousands and thousands of more African Americans in the race. I think Michael Jordan would make a lot of people uh, start thinking uh, about running for the marathon. So remember this, what inspired especially Kenyans to start running uh, long distance was a gentleman by the name of uh, Kipchoge Keino, who in the 60s, uh, one of the Olympics in the 60s, actually managed to not only set a record, but he raised a lot of hopes for a lot of people in Kenya. So. I believe that uh, there just needs to be one African American who can win a marathon and you'll see how many African Americans will do very well in marathon. Well, for Michael Jordan, he used to play baseball in Birmingham and I don't, I don't think it, it made that much of a difference racially. You know, baseball fans went out and saw him and, and Jordan fans went out and saw Jordan at the game. Now, he was a terrible baseball player. <laughs> but, you know, I think, for example, I think if Oprah came to Birmingham and ran, yeah, that, that would bring probably, I would definitely bring a lot of women out. It might bring a lot more black women. But I, I certainly think it would have an impact. I, I don't necessarily think that it would have an immediate impact. Uh, I think someone from younger generation uh, uh, may have a, a greater impact. Some, somebody like uh, P. Diddy continuing to do the, uh, the, the same thing he did in, in the ING New York City Marathon, maybe doing that in, in Chicago. I think... I think that's a great example. Uh, if you look at uh, P. Diddy in New York a few years ago, um, that, that, that one of the things that we're doing with the World Marathon Majors with this group and this partnership is to really elevate the visibility of the sport um, and, and, and get it in front of people, not just the people that run and not just the people that are thinking about running, but people that would never think about running. It's got to be much more of a broader-based marketing strategy, broad, broader-based appeal and visibility that will draw interest and hopefully draw more of the youth more of the general community, more of the media, and just it's, it's a whole team effort that we're, gonna, that we're working together to get to. So I think that's a great point. I mean, the celebrity that runs drives more interest than some of our top athletes. And that's, I think there's, that's good and bad, but I think it's, it's, it's a clear message on where we need to go and how we need to promote the athletes and the top athletes and make stars out of these guys and make stars out of these men and women that are probably some of the most dedicated athletes in the world. So that's, there's a path for us and there's a mission. And I think with this organization, I think that's something we can accomplish. If Michael Jordan was to run, then uh, I would imagine it would, uh, you know, boost marathon participation. Uh, you can see, like, uh, when Oprah or uh, P. Diddy or, you know, any, any of the big stars like Lance Armstrong, anybody like that runs a marathon, it stirs up a lot more interest. So I think it's, uh, you know, they probably get more attention than even uh, the, the top Kenyan guys. I think Michael Jordan running the marathon is going to make people want to run a marathon. I think if Michael Jordan were to, you know, start sponsoring youth groups that run marathons, or, I mean, at one time, Michael Jordan in a marathon isn't going to convince African Americans that they're going to run out and, and, you know, jump out and run a marathon. I think, though, if there is an African American who won a marathon um, and got a contract with Nike or somebody was all over the television and maybe that whole idea would kind of change a little bit. Kind of like Lance Armstrong in, in cycling. But I don't think Michael Jordan running one marathon is going to make all African Americans turn around and say, okay, I'm going to run a marathon. Even kids. I don't know. Olympic silver medalist Med Kaflesky, who finished second last year here in New York. He will try once again to become the first American man since Alberto Salazar, 23 years ago, to win this race. And he'll be trying to do it against a tough men's field that includes defending champion Hendrik Ramal of South Africa, the world record holder in the marathon, Kenya's Paul Turgot. Meb Kefleshi, as the 2004 Olympic silver medal winner in the marathon, 70 days later, Meb would stun the track and field world again by finishing second in the prestigious ING New York City Marathon. Meb is the Michael Jordan of running. A silver medalist in Athens from the United States, Meb Kaflesgi.
a two-time U.S. Olympian at the 10,000 meters from the United States, Abdi, Abdi Rahman. Last year's ING New York City Marathon champion from South Africa, Hendrik Ramala. Reigning Boston Marathon champion from Ethiopia, Halu Negusi. Current world record holder from Kenya, Paul Turgat. Good luck to all our athletes. Perform 2004, Mevka Flesky finished second in the Olympic Marathon and second in the ING New York City Marathon. Mev, what will it take to win it all this year? A lot of patience. Uh, it's been a tough year for me, but I'm here in New York. I'd like to thank you for the ING New York Marathon for bringing it. It's a beautiful day here and hopefully a good show. How's your thigh that you injured in August at the World Championships? It's good right now, and you know there's been a lot of teams that are working, working in Tampa, San Diego, and Mammoth Lakes. Hey, I've done the best that I can to get ready for this with Coach Larson. The rest is up to God. Meb, good luck. Thank you. So Meb looks to become the first American to win the ING New York City Marathon since Alberto Salazar completed his three-peat in 1982. Right now, race... The way I started running is in the P class, uh, physical education in seventh grade. I happened to run, uh, every Friday we run a mile or 600 meter. I ran a 520 and uh, that opened up an ice uh, just because I wanted, to get, wanted a good grade. And uh, the rest is history because, uh, you know, I try to be a better person every time. But here comes Meb. Meb's not through yet. I mean, this guy is tough as nails. He's not saving himself for the wedding. <laughs> well, he's got two weeks to recover. Come on. Well, they're all There's taking 25. their punch. miles. They're all taking their punches, and they can all take a punch. USA comes Meb Kaplesky. Silver medalist in the Athens Marathon. And he puts a third place finish next to last year's second place finish. But the 2005 ING New York City Marathon champion is Paul Turgot. To all the runners who fell behind and now they get to the finish line and they get to hear the story and someone comes over and says you're not going to believe it Ramallah and Turgot had a sprint finish and separated they were by a second and they go what? Market uh, for African Americans you have to give it a try and we have to participate more in the 5k, 10k and half marathon um, you know you know African Americans we are the best in the sprints but now that I, I myself and Abdi and two other ones who could start the trench hall in the mile, 800, 5K, 10K marathon, and the way to do that is we have to give it a shot. Don't be scared of the distance, that's the bottom line. If we, if we scared of the distance, you know, you could be a great 400 meter, you could also be a great 800 meter. And let it as you get older, you could be a great 1500 meter. And uh, don't, in, in college also, you could, don't, don't hesitate to uh, do a 5K, a 10K, because, uh, now everybody wants to be a spinner, it's glamorous, but the three main glamorous events are the 100 meter, mile, and a marathon. So, you know, we all have it, we have it in us because, you know, our ancestors that has been able to do all the labor and a lot of work should be in our genes. We met up with some of the members of the Max Fitness Marathon training program at Bar Louis. I met Troy, he was training for a marathon, and I was a person who worked out on a regular basis, but I thought he was crazy. He would go run 14 miles on the weekend, and I was like, dude, 
people of color really go out and do this. <laughs> and I, I, you know, I supported him, but the entire time he was training, I thought he was crazy. And I went to the marathon that year to, to cheer him on, and I was at the start line, and it was the most incredible feeling of my life. I had not felt that way since 11th grade track, <laughs> the sprint relays, you know, and it was just this incredible feeling in my in the pit of my stomach, and I knew at that moment that I had to do this. And, and she's been so running behind me ever since. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we, we do, he trained me for my first race, which was a half marathon, and he took the summer. He had an injury or surgery, so he couldn't run the full marathon that year, so he trained me for a half marathon, and after the half, I knew I could do a full, and so this is number three for us, and it is hard sometimes getting up in the morning and at 5 o'clock, like... Now, in, in the beginning, like she said, I, you know, I trained. Uh, I, I'm surprised she admitted that I actually trained her. You trained me. Nothing. You did. So, but um, now she's the one that gets up early in the morning, and I'm the one that wants to lay in the bed the extra half an hour. Like, do we really have to do this in the morning? And so I think we work together with inspiring each other. Oh, no doubt. Yeah. yeah so no there's doubt. days when. I don't want to get up and run, and, and she's ready. Uh, there's days when, when she doesn't want to get up and run, and I'm like, we can do this. And yeah, so yeah. I think we so, inspire each other. Oh, definitely, without yeah. a doubt, yeah. <laughs> Dale Morrison, I'm from Chicago, Illinois. Uh, this is my third marathon overall. My first marathon was last year. Uh, I ran Chicago Marathon uh, for the first time last year, and then I ran San Diego back in June. And this is my third marathon. And uh, I had a great run today, in fact. And I set a personal best for myself. And my goal um, is to run Boston one day. So uh, hopefully I can keep training and hopefully one day build up to that point. And I think running with this group is going to definitely help me uh, get to and reach that goal. I think the first idea for me to run a marathon was my brother, who is also very athletic. He's my older brother. And um, he ran a marathon probably 20 years ago. <laughs> and he ran, I think he ran it twice. But he's always been a, a mentor for me uh, to stay in shape and to really do things differently from um, a lot of people in my community. Uh, I'm from the south side of Chicago. And typically, uh, we tend to follow what we see around us, which is we see a lot of basketball. Um, Jackie Robinson Baseball League was in my area, so I played baseball. I did a lot of those things. But uh, running is just something that's not really prevalent in our community. And one thing that I saw, I had a mentor. Like I said, I had my brother doing it. What I'm hoping to do with this as well is to inspire um, both men, women, children, anybody to come out there and be a part of this because it's really for, it's really for all of us. Um, and when you go out here on, in, on these days, it's so inspiring to come out here and run um, and to see other people, other black people out here running. I'm always inspired by that. But again, we only make up a small percentage of the people who run. So one of my goals is to be a, a spokesman, to come out here and, and show people that this is also for us and to uh, uh, just be a motivation. I've, I've had people just today, as I finish, come up to me and say, well, how did you do it? And I said, hey, this is only my first year doing it, and I'm, I'm having a great time doing it, and I have a lot of people around me for support. And uh, I'll be mentoring them this coming year to, to help them run one. What inspired me to run my first marathon um, is I have this list, and it's a list of a, a lot of accomplishments. And the marathon was on the list, and as I got older, I wanted to start actually checking things off of the list. I have been a volunteer for the marathon for a number of years, and I also work in public relations, and Nike was my client a couple of years ago, and that's when I first met Rudy. And that is what kind of um, kick-started me actually registering for the marathon and me completing my first marathon. This is the second year that I've done the marathon, and hopefully, you know, I might, might do another one. But it's a great way to um, stay active and you know stay in shape. And I've met a host of fabulous people, so that's another great reason um, to become involved in, in running. 
Um, but again, you know, I, I, it was just a personal goal of mine, and I'm glad that I've, I've done it. We're injured runners. We want to make sure that our group members had good, a good experience, and also just to help out all the other runners cheering and giving out the water and the Gatorade. Okay. It's really about team support. We all have run or competed, and we've trained with all of these individuals. So it's about support and knowing that they can make a difference in their lives and in ours and other people. It's team support. I volunteer because I, uh, I plan to run next year and I just need the motivation to see so many people come out and, uh, and run. It's just such a great inspiration to me. Um, I volunteer because every other year I either run the marathon and then I sit out a year. So this was my year to sit out. Also, as Rose said, it gives us uh, an opportunity to support our other team members and cheer them on and help us to stay motivated and fit as well for the upcoming marathon. One thing is for sure, we've learned that you don't make this race by yourself. Yeah, yeah. It takes a team. Yeah. It takes a lot of support. Yeah. And it's the little things that count. Yeah. I mean, if I don't get a phone call from Roe at 5.30 in the morning, something is wrong. Yeah. And if I don't hear from my, my, my team members, something is wrong. Yeah. And you gotta, you gotta have the support and you gotta have the infrastructure. This doesn't happen in a vacuum. It takes a lot of organization, a lot of, a lot of volunteer administrative time, as well as physical education time. I'd just like to add to that. If you ever want to really meet people and learn about interacting with people, join a marathon training team. Join a, a, a multi-sport activity where you interact with people. There is nothing like training with someone for a marathon, a triathlon. You build, you build so much camaraderie, so much spirit. You, you, all of these people, all of us were strangers to each other. Now we are family, and we come from all walks of life, all backgrounds. We are family, and so we are closer than we are with our blood relatives, okay? In many ways, you are. Oh. Well, so many people have, um, when I've done the marathon, so many people have been encouraging to me. And when we're doing our six months training, mm -hmm. There's so many people in Max Fitness and on the Lakefront Training and other teams who are encouraging and supportive. You know, when you're doing that 21 miler and you're at the end and somebody walks by or runs by and says you're looking good and you know they're not telling the truth exactly, but it still helps and the energy I get from other people encouraging me, it just makes me feel that I have to. Um, I would be completely remiss if I did not repay that in some way. So that's why I volunteer. Well, my reason for volunteering is that I know that the runners run through the south side of Chicago, Bronzeville, and I want to make sure that all people know that African Americans are very supportive of Marathon, and we are the best runners anyway. And on the <laughs> south side, we want to let them know and encourage everyone to continue to run, but to let them know the people on the south side African Americans support the marathon. We are marathoners, and we just wanted to say, hey, 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 keep going. Yeah. Actually, when we first started the program, uh, North Siders didn't think it was safe to run on the South Side. Now, with the number of lakefront improvements, the South Side is just as beautiful on the lakefront as the North Side. And we look at marathoning on the South Side as something that's continuing to grow in a very positive way. Uh, looking at our group, I'd say our first year, we only had about 40 people. Now we've grown to 160 people. And these are people who were told in the past that they couldn't run, uh, that their bodies weren't made for running, and their families didn't believe that they could run. Whereas I have a guy who's here in the room right now, he's 260 pounds, he runs for an hour and a half straight without even breaking a sweat. I mean, it's something where he's the first in his family to ever do anything, you know, any type of organized running, and it's something where his locus of control will see the changes he's made. They'll see the fact that he's lost uh, 28 pounds over the last six months, and they'll then ask why. And it's a positive change. And then also, when you look at uh, lowering BMI, body mass index, and lowering cardiovascular disease risk, that's what we have to look at doing when trying to change lives and increase lives for, uh, as far as longevity and increase life expectancy within the African American community. We are the uh, Palmer Park Runners from Chicago, Illinois. 
Palmer Park is 111th and King Drive. So this is our park. We run here and life is good in Palmer Park. Energy. A challenge. It's a great uh, being good people running. Peace and tranquility and good health. Stress free. Boost the energy. When I leave the park after running, I'm so full of energy. I just oh, clean my house. I do everything. I'm just full of energy <laughs> for the rest of the day. In fact, quality of life, mental stimulation, all around fitness, physical and mental toughness. Rudy Christian of Max Fitness and Bernard Lyles of TriMasters have made a difference with black Americans pursuing long distance running, marathon, and triathlon training programs. Bernard Lyles is the leader of the TriMasters program, the slogan, Try, and you can master anything in life. Originally founded in 1987 in New York City by triathlete Alvin Hartley, TriMasters has quickly become one of the most successful triathlon clubs in the country. After becoming tired of being the only person of color in the countless competitions he entered. While competing in Chicago, triathlete Bernard Lyles met Alvin Hartley and his team. Experiencing the same challenges within the sport, Lyles was intrigued by the TriMasters concept and founded the Chicago chapter of TriMasters in 1990. Slow down. Slow down. There you go. Good job. All right. This is the first one in the history of the city on the south side. The city is a co-sponsor, the park district is a co-sponsor, Valleys, Walgreens, Staples, uh, lots of businesses that are in the area, local businesses are here. Dominic's has been the sponsor of the food um, here. So we've had a wonderful Cliff Bar. Uh, there's so many different sponsors.
don't you my jam Bob they lake to the sound man But my heart is strong Well look I'm gone They chase me around town man I ain't gonna need no pills To keep my blood pressure down I'm telling y'all Any hands? Okay, great. Listen, you guys, we're all so excited for you. There's nothing as exciting as the first marathon. It's like the greatest thing. But I also got to tell you, it's the easiest marathon. After the first one, they get tougher. I was told this morning by Lieutenant Governor Cruz Bustamante that he had reviewed the numbers. 
and that 90% of the students who run and students run LA and finish complete college. One thing is for sure, we've learned that you don't make this race by yourself. It takes a team. It takes a lot of support. And it's the little things that count. And the Boston Marathon continues to savor that qualifying process. It's become important to all marathons around the world. It's the, it's the one true sign that you've made it as a serious runner when you're able to qualify for Boston. Great run today, in fact. And I set a personal best for myself. And my goal um, is to run Boston one day. So In Boston, for example, New Balance has brought people out over the years to the Newton kids race where they would bring kids out from the inner city of Boston, mostly African American, give them shoes and have them participate in the races. And my view is it's, it's really more a matter of exposing kids to it. Michael Jordan, he, he's got a lot of influence. I'd say that he he and Oprah Winfrey, Oprah Winfrey, you know, everybody, you can, I can tell, I tell a lot of my runners and women, not just African American too, um, hey, the Oprah Winfrey ran a marathon, I know you can. When I met Troy, he was training for a marathon and I was a person who worked out on a regular basis, but I thought he was crazy. He would go run 14 miles on the weekend and I was like, do, do People of color really go out and do this. <laughs> you need to do is always create an opportunity for people. Talent is everywhere. It only needs an opportunity. I think the larger issue is really that it's never be been to the African American community a goal in sports, whereas sprinting, all the, dist uh, the uh, shorter distance sports have always been very prestigious among black Americans. And by the way, we do not want to make people become the same all over the world. I believe that Kenyans have done a very decent job in doing long distance. African Americans have done a very, very decent job in running short distance, and that should be kept so that we can complement each other. Jordan running the marathon is going to make people want to run a marathon. I think if Michael Jordan were to, you know, start sponsoring youth groups that run marathons, or I mean, at one time Michael Jordan in a marathon isn't going to convince African Americans that they're going to run out and, and you know jump out and run a marathon. From the United States, Meb Kaflesky. simply saying that in today's environment, uh, any athlete or any race, color, creed can get out there and do their thing and, and move beyond their limits if they just sort of say, hey, today's a new day, I'm ready to go, I'm, I put my time in and I'm out to have fun.